Hi folks. Well, turns out I'm not quite dead yet. So finally, after a year and a half or so, I'm getting around to another video. That's not entirely true actually. I've made five or six videos, or at least I've recorded them and then given up on the editing. But this one, I'm going to make it really easy on myself. Okay, so this is going to be quite a mess of a video, but uh, something I ordered has finally arrived today, along with a bunch of other stuff. So um, I'm going to open some of my post here, but uh, really you're here because I'm, I'm midway through a project and one of these packages will be something to do with that. So uh, in fact most of these packages are something to do with the project. But, uh, so number one on the list has been uh, a whole bunch of these JST connectors, the crimp terminals they are used on radio controlled car power packs and things like that. But, um, I just bought myself every possible combination because the thing I'm building at the moment will need some uh, well, 11 way and two way connectors. And uh, this seemed like a fairly uh, sensible way of getting hold of everything I could possibly desire. So huge bunch of connectors and crimp terminals and a crimp tool that should uh, do the job. Yeah, that looks kind of acceptable. Okay, and the last thing, which is the, the one I was really interested in, and the one I figured it was actually worth switching the camera on for. I ain't sponsored by these guys, I paid my own money for this. Um, they did actually send me a message months and months ago offering sponsorship, but I never actually replied at the time. So, um, there's 10 of these boards. I think this cost me, it was about $29 all in because I wanted thicker copper and I wanted blue um, solder mask. So uh, I, I paid a bit more. And I dare say, since these boards are untested, that they'll all be faulty and I'll end up having to make a different version of them. But I uh, thought we'd have, have a first crack at these. So um, this video is going to be a bit of a mess and I'm not going to tell you quite what the project I'm working on is just yet. You can probably, well, you'll certainly be able to read what it says in the corner. So um, anyway, I thought I'd solder up one of these boards and have a little chat while I'm doing that. And that's basically going to be it for this video. So um, it's going to be a bit of a mess of a video, um, a little bit of a mailbag and a little bit of soldering and not really much detail on, on why or what I'm planning. But you might be able to work out what this is for by the uh, things that I end up soldering on there. So um, that, that, that's the plan. So I'll, I'll get stuck in with this and just tidy up the other things I've opened a bit and uh, see how we get on. Okay, so uh, SMD component sample book 0805 size. Uh, some 4000 series logic, uh, buck converters, uh, N-channel MOSFETs, uh, WS2811 ICs, um, that's everything except fuses which I haven't actually even ordered yet. Yeah. Oversight. Alright, let's do some soldering. Okay, so I think the first thing I'm going to want, I'll start off on the resistors. Because uh, they're small and easy to lose and I want 3K3, it says on my schematic. So. Um, I'll share the schematic and everything else about this project a bit later on when it's uh, when it's definitely something that works in fact. But uh, in the meantime I'll just get this one built and see if it actually works. At least try. Though, um, without a fuse in the circuit it's not going to work too well. So I've never actually, I, I bought these component books just for this project and I figured it was about time I started getting a stock of uh, SMD components, so uh, let's see if I can actually get these things to work. Am I taking the wrong side of this off? I don't think so. So some of the questions that people will be asking is, Jim, where have you been? What have you been doing? Why haven't you made any videos? Um, well, stopped making videos. For, well, I never really stopped making videos. I just got busy doing other things for a while and it was easier to get them done without the camera turned on. And actually, I have recorded uh, five or six videos that then I uh, 
started the editing and then gave up part way through because other things happened or I got fed up. Um, one of the reasons, which is quite a poor reason, is just uh, I, I'm doing YouTube videos to take part in the communities that are out there, but sometimes I just don't actually have enough time to properly participate. And uh, I think if you're doing something, you should do it properly. And just kind of limping along, not really participating, doesn't feel fair. I, I mean, in particular, it's when people are asking sensible, good questions on videos that I've made that deserve a proper answer. And I find myself without the time to set aside to actually answer people properly. So um, I kind of thought, well, actually, rather than uh, be a bit of a jerk and ignore people's comments and things like that, um, if I made less videos, that would mean there was less comments. But um, there's been other changes as well, so I'm not doing quite the same job I was before. And I've been doing quite a lot of travel, so I've been to China twice, India once, Switzerland once, or was it Sweden once? Um, I've been all over the place quite a few times, so I've uh, be, been around a lot. Um, my kids are a bit older now, so I'm actually able to show them cool things with computing. Um, but yeah, but basically no, nothing, nothing particularly bad, no, no health issues or anything like that. Um, just been busy doing other things. Looks like I got one of them upside down. How on earth did I manage that? Well, we can try. Do I even care? Or shall I just live with the fact one of them's upside down? No, no, we're going to be obsessive. Might as well be obsessive properly. There we go. I'll call that success. Yeah, oh, 4049 UBM. But yeah, just a hex inverter package because the uh, signals I'm getting out of U4 through U, sorry, U3 through U6 are uh, the long, wrong way around and I need to flip them round. Well, I have no idea how many of those will actually be good connections. I suspect I will be getting problems with this later. Okay, uh, next up, this is this is the one that might actually, to some extent, give the game away of what we're up to here. So um, these are WS2811 chips. And uh, if you do things with electronics, you might recognise the 2811 or possibly 6811 or 6812 as a number for something that... Uh, you've seen used in lots of projects but these chips are kind of the forerunners to that um well the chips that are on the table are the chips that are on the floor are hoover food no not quite hoover food yet something of a clue if you've worked out what this chip is i mean you could have gone and googled it by now so i'll stop kind of uh trying not to give the game away so much. So one of the issues I have with this office is the uh, lighting in here is uh, not ideal for all tasks. Um, so I thought I'd have a go at making some uh, significantly better lighting for here. Okay, so uh, that's got all the little ICs placed on there and after a bit of clean up with the flux cleaner, doesn't look too horrendous. So ne next step, I need to put on uh, four MOSFETs and uh, these are way, way overkill for the uh, load that it'll be driving, but these are the ones I had and I used on breadboard. So uh, these probably give me the best chance of something actually working. So these are International Rectifier IRF 540s, I think they were. And they'll do like 30 amps at 100 volts or something. I need them to do like two amps at 12 volts or one amp at 12 volts, but um, they'll do the job. And this is only revision one of this board. So I am fully expecting this to uh, need further revisions and uh, be, be something of a failure. But uh, if you don't try, well, you're never gonna succeed. So might, might as well have a bit of fun. Yeah, so just a quick shot, looking slightly better. Got our FETs on. I think I'm going to do the power of converters first. So I've got two different step down converters. So the, the, the project I'm planning, there's going to be a whole bunch of these in series effectively. And each one's got a bus coming in with power and data and a bus going out with power and data at the other side. 
Um, I'm, I'm planning on potentially up to 14 of these in a row and each one pulls. I mean, at, at 24 volts, probably less than an amp, hopefully, but um, actually possibly a bit more than an amp. So um, I'm going to do local down regulation to 12 volts on each one. And then I've also got uh, regulation from 12 down to 5 for the logic and for one of the outputs on this thing. Um, so I'll, I'll get those dialed in because I need to calibrate them before I uh, power them up because I don't want to blow up all of this by putting too many volts in. So um, I'll get those set up on the power supply first and then I'll tack those into place. And then the final bits are PCB terminal blocks for the inputs and for the outputs. And then JST connectors on here and here. Okay, so um, I've basically finished populating this first board and uh, well, I'm quite pleased with the way it looks. Looks like a bought one. Um, no idea if it works yet. Um, I'm going to put some power on it now and uh, see if there's any shorts. Okay, so we'll just give this a little test across the power supply rails and see if we've got things shorted out or not. And uh, due to some convenient labelling, I've got access to these on the back. I have noticed uh, one mistake I've made in that I wanted to leave off the solder mask on this particular track. So this is my 24 volt bus going from one to the other and I was planning on thickening that up with a bit of solder and yes I haven't soldered that connector in yet just in case I need to take it out but um, I'm going to have to find a different way because I want to get about 10-12 amps across that track potentially. So um, well, let's, first of all let's see uh, what resistance we've got on these rails. So uh, ground to 24 volts, number of mega ohms, that's a good sign and ground to the 5 volt output again killer ohms so that's a good sign that I don't have any uh, particularly nasty shorts on there so I'm probably okay to plug power into this okay well that's that's a pleasing sign no, nothing nothing blew up so um, theoretically we should have 12 volts out on here, which we do, 12.1, perfect, and then we should have about 5 volts out down here, 5.2 volts, ideal, and no sign of heat there, so um, I guess next I need to actually uh, hook something else and send some data through this thing. Well, I, I, I'm amazed for a first attempt that this is actually doing something worthwhile. So this printed circuit board you watch me making is a replacement for all of this stuff I'd got on breadboard and this ready-made circuit here. So what's going in is we're feeding in NeoPixel data stream here, which I'll talk about in a different video, um, passing it through a bunch of these chips where we're then powering these MOSFETs here so we can turn individual channels on and off using the same PWM control and then we're feeding it back out to this strip of NeoPixel. So the fact that this is actually changing and showing patterns means that the soldering on all of these chips has worked properly, which I'm quite amazed by. Also, both sets of voltage regulators are doing the right thing. So um, I think I'm going to go for broke and uh, disconnect from here and see if I can wire that lot into that JST connector there. So um, back in a minute. OK, so there's no way the camera will be able to uh, focus on this and get the white balance. Things aren't working quite perfectly yet. They're not doing badly, but this strip here seems to be stuck on permanently. Um, these ones have got some kind of PWM control that they're getting bright and dim, but they're flickering and they shouldn't be flickering like that. But the strip down the center is doing its thing properly. Anyway, I'm going to stop this video at this point because I've got other things to do this evening and um, I I've spent a good, uh, what are we up to now? Uh, I'm just kind of blinded by the light here. I spent five hours mucking about with all of this, so th this can wait till another night. But um, yeah, th this is my uh, digital sky project, and I will explain what that's about in a different video. Anyway, um, nice to see you again, folks. Not that I can see you, but you can see me. H hope it was nice. And um, see you next time. Bye.